Today we're talking about The Little Book of Puga. Hey everybody, so I don't know if I'm saying this right, so pardon me if I'm saying it incorrectly and you're Danish or something. I also have a cold, I'm getting over that, so this is my voice for today. I am really happy to be talking about this book today. I have a few friends that are going to be talking about it also, so we'll have some links in the description box to check out their videos, which I'm really excited to hear what they have to say from their perspective. I thought this book was really, really great. I don't necessarily agree with the author 100% on everything that he talks about in this book, but the idea here and some of the practical ways he talks about implementing this idea is just really, really something that I have been looking for and I think it's a really good time to talk about this more in like our little culture here. If you're in the world of like minimalism and essentialism, intentional living, slow living, that sort of thing, I think this is a great addition to that mindset. I love the idea of minimalism, but sometimes it can come off as like cold and calculated and, um, impersonal and that sort of thing so I feel like this is like the other end um, of that idea it kind of balance things balances things out a little bit better so to speak so some of the things that he talks about are finding you know your group basically of people that you're comfortable with and creating special quality time moments with those people and he talks in the in this um, book about how it can kind of be hard to get in um, if you're like moving into, you know, the area or something, it can be kind of hard to get into that inner circle. But once you're there, you're there and that's your group, that's your family, that's your friend circle, you know what I mean? And I, I know I've had those growing up and throughout my life, I've had groups of people where I felt very connected with these people and I kind of understand that concept. And so I pray that if you are looking for a group of people to come around you, maybe you just moved into a new area. I've moved a lot <laughs> in the past few years. And um, I think that is so important to find those people that you have things in common with and be able to join together with them and learn from them and, and share what you're learning about with them and just encourage each other, pray for one another, you know, um, grow together. Something that he talked about was um, I think he calls it egalitarianism or some, something like that where everybody is kind of on a level playing field and he was talking about when you get together and not all being like all the weight being on the host but everybody brings something, everybody cooks together, everybody cleans up afterwards together, everybody chit chats and keeps it lighthearted. and I am not against talking about politics and religion and all these other divisive things um, that people say you shouldn't talk about. But I think it is good to have times to talk about things that are important yet divisive and then other times where you're just getting to know people, you're sharing, you're um, just kind of more in a, a time of, I don't know, quality time but not something that's divisive, I guess. I love how he was talking about slow food, things like a uh, stew or you know homemade bread maybe even sourdough bread things that take a long time that aren't fancy fluffy you know um fruit fruit stuff something that's hearty that is nourishing and something that's quality that takes maybe more time to make but it's like part of the process um getting together with people and having that process together to get to your end product that's delicious and cozy and um, something that you all made together. I love how he talked about pantry parties where everybody just brings something and you all figure out a meal together and just have fun. And I just loved how he talked about maybe at like holidays or Christmas time or something, not making it something that's so much about the stuff and like this, who's gonna bring a fancier gift? And he was talking about that, how that is actually like frowned upon in this culture and how it's better to bring something um, that's not, you know, super shiny, look at me, look what I brought, fancy, but something that is like maybe heartfelt and humble, but quality and just something that, that means something, you know? And I feel like in our, in, I live in the United States and things are very fast paced. And I feel like most of the people who are watching things on YouTube <laughs> live in a culture that's very fast paced. That's why you're on YouTube. You have time to to watch these things. And so the rest of your life is probably pretty hurried so that you do have the time to you know, um, do these other things. And 
it was just nice to read about, you know, coming back to that culture of, of, um, of quiet, finding a place of quiet, of solitude, of nice mood lighting, of maybe a blanket, comfortable clothes, people that aren't going to judge you or, you know, we go on, on some of these social media sites and perfect strangers are arguing about things that don't even matter. And I just thought that this book was so refreshing that you could just kind of put all that stuff aside and you know, you're done with your work day or you're done with your day with the kids and you just find a cozy spot and a good book and, you know, a nice warm cup of tea and light a candle and, you know, and he was talking about how lighting is so important and how they'll, they'll spend a lot of money on a really nice lamp if the lighting is good. And that's what I want, you know. I feel like I'm getting emotional, but this book really, like, spoke to me on a really deep level. And, um... My friend, the wannabe homesteader here on YouTube, and I just, I'm actually crying, isn't this crazy? Um, but it's just so close to my heart, you know? And we actually gave away two books on Instagram, and we're gonna be doing a challenge, an Instagram challenge, and we'll have different things that you can do every day and post a picture of maybe some candles or, you know, something cozy or whatever. And, and so follow both of us on Instagram <clears throat> and all the other ladies too, who are also joining in on this collab with us. And, um, we just, we want to kind of create more. I, my channel is a community channel. You know what I mean? I want to join in with you guys in, in the things that we want to do. I know that, that there's so much that you want to do. <laughs> it can get kind of crazy. But I, I really want to talk more about the things that are important to me and um, the things that I want to focus on in my life and have it be less but better. You know, like not all these things all the time, buying this and buying that and doing this and doing that. But the things that I do, I want to do well, and I want to I want to pursue quality. And with my wardrobe, I, I don't need everything that there is to wear, but I want to buy some things that are nice and that are going to last. And I feel like this book was really, really about that, buying things that are quality and maybe not having, you know, 29 blankets, but have a, good, a couple of really good blankets that when your friends come over, you guys can, you know, read a book or you know chat about a book you've been reading and have a cup of tea and you know and feel secure and I loved how he talked about this concept not being about a lack of nev negative things in your life or maybe maybe it's raining outside maybe it's a blizzard outside but he said that that it makes it even more so this huga this this idea of you know feeling safe and secure and loved and accepted and um you know that just knowing what's important and not worrying too much about the other things out there i like how he talked about sweets and you know sometimes that's one of the things that we can get so oh don't don't eat too much sugar it's very bad for you and i'm one of those people i try not to eat too much sugar because i know it's not really you know benefiting much in the long run but what he talks about is you know treasuring that really fresh donut or or making a cake together when your friends come over and having it be a really good cake you know and and it, it actually made me want to buy a cake I actually got some ingredients I haven't made it yet but I want to do something and, and make a nice cake and um, you know and just just have that idea of being a good hostess I've gone through ebbs and flows of being a good hostess um, when people come over and there have been seasons where I've done more of that and seasons where I've done less but I feel like that would be fun to come back into something like that. But yeah, quality. Quality over quantity and um, and knowing what's important. And I think that, that idea of safety when there's maybe a storm going outside, that makes it even more cozy because you have a fireplace and there's a storm outside or the, maybe it's raining outside and you light some candles and you tell stories or something. That's what's important. I know that a lot of the, the best memories that I have of my my husband and I together are times when I was scared to do something and he's like, we can do this, we can do this, and we did it together. I remember we were we were going skiing in New York. My family, um, my part of my family is from New York, and so we go up there every once in a while. And uh, I, we had been on the bunny slopes, you know, trying to, to learn how to do this again. I've been skiing, you know, since I was little, but it's only like one time every couple years for, you know, a few hours, so I'm <laughs> not good at all. So we were going on the bunny slope and then he was like, okay, well, let's try doing, you know, a little bit higher. And so I was like, okay, well, we can go a little bit higher. I think I was going to go like halfway up, you know, the next size mountain. And we go all the way up to like the, not the top, top. It wasn't like expert or anything, but it was like 
medium, you know, like high. And to me, that was just super high. And I was like terrified looking down, thinking I have to get all the way down this mountain now. Like I, I went way higher than I thought we were going to go. And, and I was literally just scared, like afraid of heights scared. I have a bit of that fear of heights in me, apparently, um, which you never really realize until you're up high. And then you're like, ah, okay. Um, but I remember my husband saying, well, okay, we're just going to go over there. And then we're gonna go over this side and we're gonna kind of zigzag our way down the mountain and it's gonna be okay. And he's funny because he takes his time when he learns something and he learns it the right way and he does it really well and he winds up excelling at whatever he does because he really, he takes time to learn to learn the rules and do it the right way. And I'm like, oh, I got this. And I'm just like doing whatever the heck I want and I'm never really that great at anything. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I, I we can do this. and. So I would somehow get to this corner and then he'd come over and then we would get all the way to the other side and somehow he seemed like he knew what he was doing and I was just terrified the whole time. But we finally got down the mountain. But I, I will forever remember that, that he is very cool under pressure. And that's like this idea of that feeling, that safe and secure feeling, even though maybe something is crazy in your life, having those people that you can connect with and do fun things that it's not about the money and the grandeur and the fancy and everything, but it's about the quality and the, you know, the taking the time and putting away the things that don't matter for a minute and just talking about the things that are important to you and, and finding common ground with people and connecting with people that you love. So that's my idea of this concept of huga and I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry, and I don't know if my ideas of this are exactly the same as what he meant for me to understand about it when he wrote the book, but this is what it means to me. And I thought it was amazing and I can't wait to watch everybody else's videos and see what they have to say about it. I would really recommend that you get this book. Um, even if you just get it from the library, that's what I did. I got it from the library um, and read it in, I think it was actually maybe three or four times of reading that I actually read it. It took me about two weeks, but it was there was only maybe four or five different nights that I actually took the time to read it during that period and and it was so easy to read because it's literally like you know it's talking all about these different concepts and just the way that he put it together it's really easy to read and understand and I you know I just thought it was really really good it was really like a guidebook of how to just slow down and treasure the important things he's even got recipes in there he's got different types of lighting that they love and ways to implement this into your life so it wasn't just like oh this is what these people do it was more like Here's how you can implement these things into your life. And that's my favorite kind of book where you walk away and you feel like you have the tools to do something with, you know, what whatever you were talking about and really make a change in your life. And I think this is this is a good place to make a change. This is something that's really going to affect you, you know, for your life. And I, I'm a Christian, so I believe that my joy first and foremost is in the Lord and no matter what happens with my circumstances or whether I have a big people group or no, big isn't the right word, whether I have a very connected and and um, strong relationship with people around me or not I know that God is my hope and he is my joy and he is my peace and he is my comfort and and all that so that's where I first get my sense of joy and I believe that happiness is kind of fleeting and can be created or destroyed um, but my joy is in the Lord but I think that besides that I mean that's that's my first and foremost my joy is in the Lord but besides that this is a very practical way to remember to slow down and enjoy the people in your life and connect with them on a meaningful level. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet, especially if you're from somebody else's channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I bet you're an awesome person because I love all the ladies in this collab. If you're new from their channels, hi and welcome. If you are from my channel and you're just watching mine first, be sure to check theirs out. I'm really looking forward to watching all of their videos. And remember that God loves you, he sees you, and he will make everything beautiful in his time. Bye.